Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I finally got a redhead or red head. And I'm going to see if Coach Rob remembers it. Stay tuned. All right, so this video came from Charlie Nock, actually, who suggested that I look for a red head. Um, actually, a lot of fans have been asking and referring to the head or the red head. And I was always like, what is this red head everybody is asking for and talking about? So I finally did some research and my buddy Pete Allen actually gave me one and I had it all along. I did not even realize it um, and I didn't realize it was the red head. So Coach Rob is with me now. Um, do you remember a racket made by head that's referred to the red head? Right. I remember I had that one what? Um, back in the day. I can't say I still have it, but I remember that I think that was the first one where I went from wood to metal. Okay. Um, so that was... It was red, had a red throat. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember if there's any other red on it, but I just remember the red throat part and it said head on it. And Do you remember calling it the red head? I think it was the red head because there was also a blue one. There was a blue head, okay. so that was, the, and it was just like the throat was different. I don't know if the head sizes were different. I, don't, I didn't know that much about tennis back that point, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, I remember they had the red head and the blue head. Okay, so after doing a little bit of research on the racket, um, supposedly Bobby Riggs used that racket against okay. Billie Jean. Oh, wow. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. I don't, that's just from what I've been reading. That's funny you should say that. I actually had a woman at tennis camp uh, whose granddaughter was in our camp, and she came up, and I was showing her we were using some old wood rackets and stuff, and she talked about that she was at that match. Oh, no I know. Way. I was like, she was the first person I ever met who was actually at that match. So, okay. not to, to go off course. That's, but all right. <laughs> like, That's all right. I went to Bobby Riggs. You went to Bobby Riggs. I'm like, hey, brought in a, this just happened. A story. Okay, right. so let me let me show you if and, and see if uh, you remember this. Okay. I just happened to... Oh, wow. Is this it? I think this is it. It's red. It says head. Um, yeah, this could be it. Okay, I mean, so, it's been a while. So check this out, guys. Um, red at the throat area. So this is actually... feels like a hard kind of plastic. Does that feel like a hard kind of plastic to you, Coach? Yeah, that's plastic. Yeah, yeah. sounds and, plastic. And then... Um, it is red through the grommets. It actually has grommets, yeah. which is interesting to me. I guess you have to have grommets in a metal racket. Um, red here. Let's check the, oh, AMF head. So we mix bowling and tennis together. And there's still a sticker here that says professional. So from what I remember or what I could gather, this was actually called the head professional. Okay. I think everybody just called it the red head, just like yourself, to right. distinguish the two. Um, from a little bit more of my research, um, aluminum racket, there are talks that it was made out of Alcoa aluminum. Huh, okay. That was extruded. Hmm. So it was melted down and extruded through like a die, like like made out of, you know, you see the, the way this right. is indented here and then how it's kind of indented here. Correct. So it's kind of like this, like that. Right, and all through the grommet strips here too, mm -hmm. the same. So there's an indentation uh, throughout, very consistent indentation. That specific way they extruded it gave it stiffness, gave it power. And the power pads. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the power pads. <laughs> so um, if you guys remember Alcoa, they were, you know, pretty big in the 80s, maybe into the 90s. They're a big aluminum company. Um, 
I don't know that for a fact. I'm just reading about that. Um, I know Alcoa, though, just from them sponsoring the National Football League. <laughs> um, how big do you think this racket is? Uh, it doesn't look very big. Maybe, <laughs> is that 80? It's not 80. Practice anytime, day or night, 24, 7, 365 with Fast Track Tennis. Get your Fast Track Tennis today and get 10% off with Tennis Spin. Link is below. And get your tennis on the Fast Track. Supposedly 72. There are arguments that it could be like 65, but um, most, the consensus says 72. 18 by 18 string pattern. Um, it's about 12 ounces. I was gonna say, it's got weight. Yeah. And you see the traditional aluminum. Right. Right. So these rackets were made the same way that they're made today. So it's one extrusion of the metal. They bend it on a, on a thing and then it comes around like this. They stick the handle in it and they, they keep this bridge to hold the shape. Hmm. As you can see, it's probably not quite as perfect as it was Started out. at one time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's yeah, not bad. no, for a racket from the 1970s. 1975. 75. Yeah. So L four and a half. Yeah. I wonder what that 95 says right there. 90, is that 95 or 96? It says 95. Hmm. Yeah. Here, I'll show you. Almost guys. looks like somebody engraved it. Yeah. And I think this might be the original leather grip. What do you think, Coach? If it's not the original, it's sure close. <laughs> it's from that period of time, anyhow. The, you the, know, that small of... The thing about grips is... I've never seen them really worn out unless they were literally just left somewhere outside and just dried out. Right. And even then, um, they tend to hold up right. pretty well compared right. to what's made today. Yeah, didn't we do something to try to rough them up when they were getting really slick or I don't remember what we was it like talcum powder or something some kind of like sandpaper? That. Something I remember sort of trying to rough it up and what was it lendl with the sawdust yeah yeah yeah. i don't know if he was was leather but i remember he had the sawdust and he'd rub it on his grip and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but ready to try it let's give it a shot all right see you on the court Redhead. Professional. Okay. Thoughts? Interesting. I, I tried to remember myself as a 10 year old and trying to uh, see about hitting it, you know, and trying to remember what it felt like back then. And I think I had a two handed backhand back then. Um, but yeah, it was fun to, to swing. It's got lots of weight. Uh, once you got the racket started, it seemed like it would go on its own through the ball. Um, yeah, you just have to remember to hold your head still a little longer with the uh, 70, what did we say, 75 inch head size? 70, um, yeah, 72. Or 72. Yeah, yeah, small. So 65, 55. Th whatever it is, you got to keep your head small because the sweet <laughs> spot's about the size of the of the ball, if that. Did you frame any? No. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was fun. How did it feel when you hit it right? When I hit it right, it felt good. It didn't feel great. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is the greatest racket, right. but um, it's, you know, it's also old and I'm sure the strings are close to the same age. So um, yeah, it was metal. <laughs> yeah. Now I felt um, with my Western grip that I had to sh keep, keep the 
a little longer. I had to keep my, uh, my grip in a little longer through the strike zone up instead of swiping through it um, just because I knew. Um, I swiped a couple and it swiped off the frame. Ah. Uh, and I felt, I literally felt this whole frame on a lot of the shots. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't feel that. I was trying not to. I think I was all over the frame. I didn't want my arm to hurt. <laughs> but, but when you hit it right, though, it, it feels, it feels good. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you know the sweet spot when you hit it. Right. Um, the weight definitely is a huge advantage. Without this weight in the racket, uh, it would literally hurt you. I'm pretty sure of that. So, but super fun test. I know what you guys are talking about now when you refer back to this thing. This was definitely, I don't want to say cutting edge, but coming from a wooden racket to something like this would definitely provide you with a pretty good advantage. Yeah. I mean, you had, you know, early, sta early stages of the metal. Right. Um, solid metal. Right. Solid aluminum. Right. So, so I'll bet it's like night and day, right? All right. So... Yeah, so this is another adventure of this old racket, really like old racket, right? This old old racket. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys see one of these, you know, at the thrift store yard sale, pick it up, try it yourself. These are, you know, I think these are treasures to tell you the truth, and uh, we should all kind of appreciate where rackets came from. Yeah, definitely, especially ones that have screws built into them. You don't see that too often, right? <laughs> yeah. In aluminum ones. In aluminum, <laughs> uh, I guess you're right, yeah. All right, Coach Rob, thank you for uh, playtesting the Redhead sure. Professional with me. Definitely. Today. All right, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your old rackets.